It's a beautiful morning. <clears throat> Excuse my hoarseness, but my uh, my bug has developed into a full blown cold, so I'm blowing my nose every five minutes. I've got my Let It Snow mug, which is rather appropriate as we look like we're going to be getting snow probably in the next week or two. It's around freezing right now. And the sky is blue and clear, mostly. And beautiful. Feeling under par has done bad things for my crafting mojo, I have to say. Haven't really felt like doing a lot. But even if today is a onesie day, <clears throat> I can still get the housework done. Maybe a little bit of crocheting. The sun is so bright, I can't even see if I'm looking in the right place or if the, cat, if the phone's pointing in the right direction. <clears throat> yeah, it's absolutely gorgeous out here. And once I've had my second cup of tea, my second full glass of lemon water. I'll have some breakfast and then I'll push myself to do something. It's almost a relief to actually have this bloom out to a full-blown cold because, hey, who's had a cold in the last few years? It's always been something worse, like COVID or flu or something. This just feels like an old-fashioned cold that you know, we used to have way back when, and I haven't had one of those in a really long time. <clears throat> so I'm a little bit coughing and a little bit sniffing, a little bit headachey, but I'll survive. <clears throat> so I'll see how the day goes. Hopefully, in your world, things are going better and you're feeling 100% well. It's a lot later. I had to switch my Let It Snow mug out for this one because I noticed it had a huge crack in it. I do have two of those mugs, so it's not the end of the world. But we've had those a few years. I bought them as a, a last-minute Christmas thing a few years ago. can't remember exactly which year. But yeah, they're kind of fun. And I use them all year round, even in the middle of the summer. I don't mind, even if it does have a snowman on it. I've got uh, focaccia bread baking in the oven right now. I realized when I went to get the cookbook out for the focaccia recipe, that that was one of the cookbooks that I weeded out a few months ago because it was falling to pieces. I have this little cupboard above my stove, which is mostly filled with cookbooks. And this one is called Heaven's Banquet, and it was just in pieces. And I thought, oh, I'm just going to recycle it. What I should have done probably is go through all of the pages and see if there was anything I wanted to save. It's going to be a few edits here for sneezing and sniffing and coughing. Thankfully, I also have Gaz Oakley's book, Vegan 100, and he has a focaccia recipe in there. Of course, his looks so much more arty and beautiful than mine will, because he puts cherry tomatoes in the top of it and fresh herbs and stuff. And I just use dried herbs and drizzle it with olive oil. But I'm sure it'll taste good. And we're having what I call Jersey beans with it. Um, in the island where I grew up, a classic meal is Jersey bean crock. I feel like I should say that with a Jersey accent, but I'd probably butcher it. So uh, it's basically just white beans or what we used to call haricot beans. And of course, haricot just means beans. So <laughs> there you go. That's just what happens when English people adopt French or other things. They just sort of make a mess of the language, don't they? So navy beans, as they are known in North America, are just the small white beans. 
uh, that are pretty common in canned beans with tomato sauce. And I just soaked them and pressure cooked them and then put them in a casserole with some Bragg's, just for saltiness, Bragg's liquid aminos and some liquid smoke because I'm not going to do the traditional thing and put a ham bone in it um, and black pepper. And then I just simmered it in my Dutch oven for a while. So beans and focaccia is dinner. I'm sure the kids won't complain at that. Simple and easy and uh, about as much as my brain can handle today. So I'd got the vacuuming done, the important stuff anyway, and a couple of bathrooms cleaned. And by the time it got round to cleaning the kitchen, I was so overheated. I had already taken off the top half of my onesie and tied the sleeves around my waist just so I had a T-shirt on the top half because I was so hot. And in the end, I just thought, blow this, I'm going to open up the kitchen window and let some cold air blast in. And oh, it felt so good. I'm obviously overheating. I mean, the sun shining in was definitely heating up the upstairs. The downstairs, where I am now, is more cool and more comfortable for my fevered brain right now. I'm looking at my sewing table thinking it's a bit of a disaster, but I would really like to do something something comforting, make something comforting that takes my brain off my cold and makes me feel at least a little bit productive today. So I am going to get this table cleaned up and then think about what I want to make. It's even later now and I've had a little bit of fun making up some coasters. And the tutorial that I followed was by Minky Kim who I follow on YouTube, and I used my cute Christmas prints. She did it slightly differently than I did, or should I say I, slightly, I did it slightly differently to the way she did it. Uh, she used some special little chicken labels on the front of her little coasters. So they're called Chicken Love Coasters, but mine don't have chickens on them. And she didn't top stitch. She did some hand stitching around the chicken label on the front, which was cute. And I did consider doing some hand stitching. And I may still do some sort of embellishment on them. Because instead of coasters, I think they could be used for bunting or for maybe adding a little gift pocket to the front and putting something small inside, like a gift card or a pair of earrings or stitch markers or something like that. Anyway, I'll show you what I've made. I made two. Here we go. So I've got two, which were made with the Robin fabric with two different roof colors and two different backings. And for the sort of chimney slash smoke slash hang tag, whatever you want to call it, hanging loop. Um, I used the, that festive twill tape that I have quite a bit of still. Just a three inch piece. She used a label that she had with writing on it. And I just used that because it was Christmassy and went with those fabrics. So that's the two Robin ones. And then I made two candy cane ones. Two different roofs, two different backings, and two gnome ones. Two different roofs, two different backings. So they are really quick. And I used quite a bit of scrap batting. I pulled out my clear bag of scrap batting and 
for most of them, I just pieced a couple of things together to make the seven inch square of the batting because I wasn't going to cut into new yardage for that. And I just butt the edges up together and zigzag it together so that the batting then becomes a brand new piece which you can use. You can feel it in there ever so slightly, but you can't see it through the fabric even though I used the grey thread that I used for sewing and for top stitching everything. So yeah, a nice little group of six coasters. They work out quite big actually, they're about six inches square I think. Hmm, maybe not quite six inches square. Oh, huh, yeah. And I lay that on top of my six inch Omnigrid ruler. Pretty much covers it. So they could be used for mug rugs. Or as they say, you could always maybe add a little pocket on the front there. Or just hang them up. I suppose if you used um, a solid fabric on the front there, you could then do some stitching to make it look like a door and windows or something like that. An idea for another day. So those were fun. I find myself uh, wanting to try new things more often than go back and repeat stuff. Even though I did plan to make a bunch more of those cool cell phone cozy zipper pouch things. And I actually bought 10 sets of the D rings and the, you see those, the D rings and the swivel hooks off my friend. I haven't used any of them yet. But I will. I know I'll get around to it. But today I wanted something new and quick and fun. The focaccia bread turned out looking amazing. I will get a bit of film of that before we cut into it, if I remember. I don't believe it. Two mugs died in one day. I just knocked my glass against my mug handle and it came right off. It's a very pretty end to the day. Unfortunately, again, my camera is not picking up the depth of orange in the sky. It's evening. Dinner's long behind me and I've been watching more New Amsterdam on Netflix which I'm enjoying. I did a couple more rows on the festoon shawl by Dora Does. So now you can see more clearly how it works. The row of popcorns is more obvious now that I've done a few more rows since then. And I've done 17 rows in all. And as you can see, this is going to be a long term project. One of the things I find difficult about sock weight yarn is my usual method of tensioning means that I am having to really try and grip the yarn harder with my little finger. And I find it more challenging to get the hook through the loops correctly on the first try. It's an extended single crochet, which adds an extra little level because you have to pull the yarn through and then through one and then through two rather than just go through two loops. 
and it's fiddly. So I'm really doing my best at the moment not to let it sit for more than a day or two in between working on it because I don't want to let it languish and it end up as a UFO, unfinished object. So I've had enough of that for tonight. I can do it while I've got Netflix on. Um, as long as I don't have to watch the screen too much. So what I'm now going to do is there's plenty of evening left and I want to work on something else. Um, this is the bag with the itty bitty sweater in it that I showed you the other day. And I want to make five of these. So I've got some of my DK cakes in here. That green one can go back downstairs now because I've used that one. And I have one with brown, one with pink, oh, one with teal, and one with maroon. Now the maroon is probably a good color for a little mini Weasley sweater because that's probably one of the Harry Potter house colours, I have no idea if it's the right one. But as I said before, it's not a big deal. So I'm going to crochet all of these first, five little tiny sweaters. And then I will decide which one is for which person in the household. Needless to say, pink will be for me. So I think I'll start another one of those. They don't take long being so small. So that's the next thing. So I'm going to wind up this video tonight. It won't be super long, but it feels like the topic of this, most of this video was me having a onesie day. So it doesn't really make sense to let it flow into the next day because then it won't be another onesie day. Unless it is. Hmm. It's Wednesday tomorrow. Originally, I was going to have a knitting group tomorrow morning. But because this thing flared up, um, I cancelled it. So I actually could have another onesie day tomorrow if I wanted to. But I don't think I will because um, I'll need to at least at least get out for a walk tomorrow. I need to do some yoga tonight as well so that I haven't had a completely exercise free day. So maybe I will do that next. Maybe I will do the yoga and then get back to the couch with my crochet and my new Amsterdam. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time. Bye.